Hello and welcome my dear friends. Welcome to the first review of a fountain pen. Since my surgery, I'm not so sure that you are aware, but I suffered a neck surgery. They removed my th thyroid gland. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. In fact, I want to apologize about my voice. It's been almost a week and a half since uh, the operation, but uh, due to the fact that it was on the neck part of my body, my voice was affected and I'm still recovering from that uh, surgical intervention. I had to admit that I've missed you guys, I've missed sharing my videos with you, but at least I have time in the hospital to research on the internet new and exciting informations about my writing instruments. And today I have for you a treat. This is a Mont Blanc fountain pen, a special fountain pen. It is the Mont Blanc 3-44.G and this affordable line of fountain pens from Mont Blanc were produced in a period be between uh, 1953 and 1957. Let me give you a little zoom on it. As you can see, quite, quite a simple fountain pen with an ink window, a piston filler. And let me start with the name, guys. As you can see, it is thermically imprinted on this turning knob. Let me choose a special light for you to see. Yes, it is difficult to video to create these videos on in the ninth night time but I've just returned from the hospital and I needed to create new new content for you guys so as you can see we have a 3 a dash a 44 a point energy and let me tell you what they stand for so, in the 1950s, Mont Blanc had three lines of fountain pens. And I definitely have here some examples. And I usually keep them in this box over here. I will take the box because I want to show you the difference between the 1950s lines. So what you can see here on this display box, there are a few of my Mont Blanc fountain pens. They are not all of the Mont Blanc. This is a Senator German fountain pen, but the rest of them all, yes, I think they are Mont Blancs. This is a Monterosa from the 1950s. We will see them in a minute. Let me take out this presentation box I hope it will stand okay now guys let me show you so I'm looking for all of them but unfortunately one is missing <laughs> the most important one of them and I hope that I can find it. Yes. I'm sorry, guys. The most important, the Meisterstück line is somewhere around here. I have a 146 from the 1950s. And one way you can recognize them 
if they are from the 1960s is by the endings usually they have uh, this discoloration this ivory ending this is those are two models 146 the, this is a little bit bigger this is a duet du model with um, a silver cap and this is a simple 146 from the early 1980s this is a 144 from 1983 and these guys over here let me show it to you this is a Monterosa and sorry guys I've started with the name of the fountain pen in question so this is a three like I told you three four four point G and again three was the third line of fountain pens they were the uh, affordable fountain pens from the Mont Blanc line at that period and uh, the four stands for piston filling system and the four at the end so three four four stands for the nib size and of course we have that g at the end and g stands for in german gold feather or gold nib in english interesting the monterosa was even cheaper than the third series and they were usually in steel but i have here a model which is in fact made in gold and you can see here it is the 042g g stands for a gold nib let me show you the gold nib of this monterosa and you can see monterosa imprinted on it a 14 karat gold nib you can see they are quite similar on the monterosa we don't have the logo of the mont blanc the star on the top and uh, in fact it's not really a star it comes from the six uh, tops of the mont blanc range i believe of mountains interesting the ornament of the ring of the monterosa fountain pen so this is a monterosa let me continue guys with other fountain pens because i want to show you the difference between them when uh, well i have here a mont blanc 254 so this is the second class i have also here let me see if i can take it off if i'm not mistaken this is a, another 254 in a worse shape than the other one and let me see i have here a 244 g and another one i have here uh oh uh, let me see a 342 so interesting is to see how i can compare them yes this is our fountain pen so this is a three four four and this as you can see here engraved on the ring we have a three four two 
So the main difference between them is given by the nib. This has a number 4 nib and this has a number 2 nib. You can see the discolored logos. And interesting, one you can see has the long ink window and the other one has the ink window covered by the cap. Unfortunately, our fountain pen from today doesn't have the original Mont Blanc nib. And in the fact, I don't think that the feed is also original, but you can see if I compare it with the other one, 342, it has its original nib. You can see that we have also a similar nib in uh, the size, of course, on uh, this nib, which was replaced. It is written Nichroma Iridium Point. Definitely not the original feed of the Mont Blanc model. And if I'm returning to the 342, this is a number two nib. And this original had a number four nib. So a slightly bigger nib than this nib. But in this case, we can see that the nibs are the same type of nibs, uh, respectively number two nibs. Now that I've shown you the other models, and I'm sorry that I didn't had the Meisterstück 146 Legrand from the 1950s, I just wanted you guys to see the lines from the 1950s and the price differences were quite, quite significant between them. If you compare the three class with the uh, second class, the three class was quite a cheap product in comparison with the Meisterstück line. In fact, guys, I can definitely tell you the exact period of time when this fountain pen was made. And I will explain that to you. Based on my informations, I think that this fountain pen was produced only between 1956 and 1957. And why did I say that to you guys? You can see this white star. So this appeared only in that period of time. Before that, it was another star. And um, practically, you can see here, the star on the top is solid white and smaller than the outlined. Like I told you, they were produced in a short ink window and long ink window. It's interesting that we still have this engraving, which, which was specific to the models of the 1930s and in, of the 1940s. It is still present on this model, which makes it quite, quite nice and attractive in my opinion. The clip is a ring type. It is a screw mounted and it has this frozen drop shape. Quite, quite nice. It is um, gold plated. The trims are gold plated and they stood quite well the test of time. The very initial production consisted of celluloid models with an amber ink window. This you can see has the blue ink window. And practically the later models were produced in molded injection plastic 
with a pale blue ink window like this window you see here. The field was made out of ebonite. Unfortunately, like I told you, this is not the original feed of this wonderful product. And the first here series had a cork sealed white and the later series have a plastic seal piston. And in fact, ours is working. In fact, it's working quite, quite smooth. And you can see we have the plastic, the plastic version. So we have a later model made of injected plastic. And uh, in my opinion, this particular variation of the model, of course, is, it doesn't have the original number four nib. So again, it was produced only in 1956 and in 1957. So guys, this was the review of this wonderful, wonderful writing instrument. I will leave it for the moment here with the other fountain pens from the 1950s. And why not? I will leave its dimensions on the screen and after that we will do a writing sample of course a proper ink window for a vintage Mont Blanc fountain pen it is the royal blue from Mont Blanc and in a few moments I will be ready let me take out all the other fountain pens it is interesting guys because I have a wonderful, wonderful vintage Mont Blanc, but without the main, main part of a Mont Blanc instrument. And of course, I'm talking about its gold nib. So it will be, let's say, interesting to do a writing sample with a nib, not the original nib. It's a shame someone took the nib and scrapped it for the gold content. A shame. But this was definitely a treasured writing instrument because someone took the time of replacing the nib and replacing the feed. This is also an ebonite feed. We will see how the craftsman did let me see if it revived the fountain pen i'm quite excited to see that guys so before i use it let me give it a little shake open it gently and guys i hope i have a tissue lying around here let me see yes i have a small little tissue here okay so being a piston filler, you know the drill. This works smooth, guys. Uh, it's almost like a new pen. So for a pen from 1956, this is quite, quite a nice, nice experience, let me tell you. And let me see if it draw the ink. Of course, it draw, drew the ink because the ink window is barely visible okay now i'm tell you i'm excited guys let me change the angle of the camera before i continue okay guys okay let me see so maybe a little zoom will be in order not such a great zoom, but okay. I hope you can see. So Mont Blanc. And we have the first problem. <laughs> no problem. It doesn't write, guys. It doesn't want to write. So when I have this problem, I simply 
turn the knob you can see a little drop okay let me place it on paper and we simply draw a little flower with the nib and in the same time let me try to apply a little bit of pressure why not when this happens guys you can always re-dip it in ink just turn the piston knob now you can see it holds quite a decent amount of ink i'm quite curious to see now if it writes well it doesn't want to write when this happens i usually refill it and i hope that by refilling it it will uh, have that ink flow it is strange when this happens so it appears that the replacement feed and the nib were not quite a solution yes unfortunately guys you can see i'm trying to ride with it at least it doesn't scratch so maybe i will use it like a deep pen so let me see if i can use it like a deep pen yes it definitely wants to write but maybe the feed is misaligned i'm not so sure so look now it it tries to write guys i'm sorry about this i've tried and i don't want to waste any more of your time yes this is a franken pen yes i was expecting this need to be quite smooth unfortunately it isn't well calibrated enough well guys i was quite intrigued last night by the fact that this mont blanc won't uh, write and in the morning i took this parker quick ink that you see right over here and i fill it up again and this is the result guys it appears that it wants to write so again this is a mont blank 344g this particular model that I have here was produced in the year 1956 and in 1957 uh, it was made in Germany unfortunately guys I don't have the original nib this is a steel nib As you can see it writes quite smooth i think it is a fine nib or i will call it a fine nib let me show you some so as you can see no flex another feature of the nib let me show you how juicy it is it's not such a juicy nib let me do the pressure test so here no pressure and here pressure but no line variation let me see how if i can do a signature with it mm, not such a smooth signature fountain pen uh, it uh, definitely has a little bit over ink flow problem 
let me see another trait okay yes the important reverse writing let me see so reverse writing and surprise surprise definitely a possibility now guys let me tell you about the quick brown folks so the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog you can see at the end we lost the ink flow what can i tell you guys it doesn't compare the nib doesn't compare with the original gold nib that was fitted on the 344 nib again this is a knee chroma iridium point nib i'm not so sure about the producer but it definitely needs tuning because in combination with this feed it doesn't deliver a nice and steady ink flow of ink as you can see on the writing sample so this was it guys it wasn't fair for such an iconic fountain pen to to have a review without a writing sample i will include this part in the original video and now i'm working on new exciting videos so stay tuned to my channel guys back to the original video now bye bye i don't know the cost of a replacement nib maybe i can find one on ebay being a vintage mont blanc from the 1950s they are quite quite rare rare pieces and they don't appear often on the market well guys i didn't pay a large sum of money for this fountain pen in fact i've made a great great deal in my point of view i think i paid around 170 lays so in euros around 25 euros yes indeed it doesn't have the original name but guys it is a 344 in a quite quite nice condition if i can find those parts it will be a nice nice fountain pen and i think it will be enjoyed for at least 50 years from now on it stood the test of time look at the wonderful condition of course it has micro scratches it has sign of use but all of us have sign of use when the time passes over us guys thank you for your time i want to thank you for your support during my days spent in the hospital it really helped me a lot your wonderful messages of health and it made me feel appreciated i'm sorry about this video it is my first video since i uh, was since since i returned home from the hospital i hope my voice was powerful enough for this video this is a wonderful fountain pen i love the history of mont blanc and probably you know that in the 1950s are my favorite years of the mont blanc fountain pens whenever i see a mont blanc from the 1950s whatever the shape uh, i buy it i buy it for parts i buy it for my pleasure and uh, guys you can find nice nice deal as out there it doesn't have to be in an nos condition in fact i prefer it like this 
with micro scratches with signs of uh, the personalization of the user this doesn't have the originals original owner's name on it but it is a, in a wonderful wonderful shape at least the piston it runs like it was new the only problem you saw was was the feed and the nib again guys thank you for your time if you are new to this channel and you have questions about the Mont Blancs from the 1950s or the modern ones please leave them in the comments also please subscribe to this channel to support my activity for the rest of you guys or all of you i wish you to have a wonderful night please take care of yourself in this pandemic time i will see you again at the next episode till then bye bye and god bless you all bye bye